moments, uh, give people some time to get here and to get settled. So bear with us for just a minute or two while we set ourselves up live in all the places. So welcome to the webinar. Is it a webinar? Tyler, didn't we came up with a new name like live show? Yeah, true. I'm calling it the monthly community call that happens to feature a conversation about the release. That's the long description. That's not a very good one, but there does need mm. to be a, a, a better term than the uh, than webinar. Maybe ClickHouse Live? Yeah, ClickHouse Live sounds better. ClickHouse Community Call with conversation. It is, it is a live house. How is it for you? Yeah, much better. So welcome to Live House. And I'm happy to see so many people joining, especially those of you who are joining for second time, for third time, for 20th time. I am joining this webinar probably 20th time or 25th time. I don't remember. So welcome, Adam, Elon Tal, Arno, Avinash, Brian, Dennis, uh, Jan or Jan. Sorry if I'm pronouncing not correctly. Konstantin, Larry Lua. Nice to see you. Mikhail. Uh, Majid, Nikolai, Paul, Ricky, Robert, Schulze, how happy I am to see you. Roman Wasim, Tanya, nice to see you again. Sanjay, Todd. We will start maybe in uh, one minute, maybe in 30 seconds. And while you have these 30 seconds, you can ask just a single question before we will start to warm up. A single question about ClickHouse or about the future of humanity. And just a reminder, for those of you who are on the Zoom session, the webinar chat is open, as is the Q&A panel. Please feel free to use it. For those of you catching up on YouTube, we're keeping an eye on YouTube live chat as well. Um, so keep an eye out. Oh, here's a great question for you, Alexei. Where do you think the largest area of investment or from an ROI perspective is to spend time in the ClickHouse code base right now? Actually, not one area, but three different areas. So first, we should finish our analyzer project. It is going for too long, and we plan uh, we plan to finish it already. But we still have about half a hundred of tests to fix. We have to finish our transactions implementations, and. We, we still have semi-structured data in experimental stage. I don't like such a good features in experimental stage for so long. So if you want to volunteer, please do. Actually, these features are have the largest ROI, but also they are the most tricky. And mm. it is usually the case. But don't worry. If you want to bring something interesting to the house, just implement a new function. Just a small, <laughs> small little function, and you will get a lot of reward. 
Amazing. Well, let me again welcome everyone. Uh, for all of those who have joined, we are delighted that you are here to join us for what we have just termed Livehouse, the ClickHouse monthly community call. Uh, quite a lot to cover, which is super exciting. So I'm not going to go through the standard preamble, um, but we're delighted that you're here. What makes ClickHouse special is its community. So with that, Alexei, would you like to take it away and introduce us to 23.7? Let's start. So, ClickHouse version 23.7, what it is and what we will have. We have a lot of content. It is very packet, uh, packet schedule. We even have a few guest talks, but you will see. It. And ClickHouse 23.7, it is a ClickHouse summer release with over 30 of new features, 16 performance optimizations, and about 50 bug fixes. So let's start. What about nice and small new functions that everyone can contribute if they want? The first one is named init cap and uh, its counterpart init cap UTF-8. What it does? It gets a string and just capitalize every first letter of every word. You pass this string and you get this. If you write something not in English like this, just use init cap UTF-8 and you will get this. And just in case I checked how it works with Chinese and it works all right. It does nothing for Chinese as expected. So nice function, let's continue. Has subsequence, what it does. It gets two strings and it checks if uh, the second argument is a subsequence, so contains uh, all the characters, uh, not quite, all the character, characters of the string contained in the first string in the same order. For example, uh, rep mt is a subsequence of replicated merge tree. And if you Press something like this. You can check if ClickHouse is a subsequence of ClickStream data warehouse and has subsequence function will return zero because here the H letter is capital and here there is no capital H. And ClickHouse is always with capital H. Remember, please remember it. But there is a function has a subsequence case insensitive that will return true. And if you want to check it for something more complex like uh, Kyrillic or Chinese letters or uh, any Latin alphabet, you can use this has a subsequence case insensitive UTF. Eight. And you know what? This function is fast because every function should be fast in ClickHouse. We don't allow anything slow. This function is pretty boring. First line. It just gets a text, multi-line text, and returns the first line without the line break, just before the line break. And this function is actually unneeded. In previous versions of ClickHouse, you can write like this extract by regular expression. Do you know regular expressions? Do you like, do you enjoy writing regular expressions? Mm. I do sometimes. 
but I am not proud of this fact. <laughs> sometimes I write regular expressions and sometimes I even enjoy it. Sometimes I'm wondering what I just have written. So you can write it like this. You can also do it without regular expression like this. Just use the substring function. And actually it has uh, just one small trick. So you can extract a substring from the first character. Uh, the indexes in SQL are based from one, not from zero. And uh, pass the position of the first new line in text. And there is one trick. Uh, this uh, we should extract until the new line, but don't include the new line character. So minus one here. But if the new line is not found, so there is just one line in the text. The position function will return zero. And this index of the end uh, for substring will equal to minus one. And surprisingly, the function substring will work in this case. Minus one means extract everything up to the end of the string. So it is maybe quite nice, but actually also quite boring because in ClickHouse version 23.7, you can just do it like this, select first line and that's it. Nice. And thanks Dmitry for implementing this feature. This looks more interesting, array chakard index. It is described by this formula. And let's take a look at this example. So we will get an array of tokens from a string. Clickhouse is a database. And another string, Clickhouse, is a good database. And this function, array jacquard index, will check how close uh, these uh, arrays together. So let me do one experiment. What do you think? What value this function will return for this particular example? And if your answer will be correct, for the first correct answer, you will receive a gift. And by the way, you can cheat. Just install the latest release. It is already available in the repository. And you can get the, the definite answer to this question. So Tyler, do we have any answers? We don't have a whole lot of guesses. We have one guess of five, one guess of 0 0.8. YouTube is still catching up, so they're slightly behind. So we should expect guesses from, from YouTube shortly. But yeah, I'm seeing 5 and 0 0.8 as the guesses right now. OK. 0 0.85 as another. Could you also please highlight the names? Yes. Dan guessed 5. Robert Schulze guessed 0 0.8. And Alexei um, guessed 0 0.85. Okay, so let's do the following. We will calculate it together. So array jacquard index does the following. It calculates the ratio between uh, the size of uh, set intersection and the size of set union. Let's uh, check what is the set. And uh, we have uh, four tokens here, ClickHouse is a database, and five tokens here, the ClickHouse is a good database. So the set union has a size five, and the set intersection has size four. If we will divide four by five, we will get 
zero point eight. So Robert, you are your guess is correct, but I'm afraid I cannot send. I cannot send a gift for you, because you are ClickHouse employee. Didn't we have any uh, more correct answers before I did this explanation? We had two that were close. We had a 0 0.75 and a 0 0.85, but the, the correct answer was indeed Robert's. But Arnaud guessed uh, 0 0.75 and Alexei guessed 0 0.85. Mm. I cannot just take these uh, two numbers and <laughs> obtain a, a mean of them. It will be cheating. Okay, no problem. Let's look. Let's take a look at something else. What do we have to improve ClickHouse operations? We have a new query named system stop listen. I'm not sure how to read it. Maybe I should read it like this. ClickHouse stop listen <laughs> what I will say. Or ClickHouse please stop listening. Okay, but what it does it uh, tells ClickHouse to stop receiving uh, queries or requests on a particular interface. So with this query, system stop listen queries, HTTPS, you will, the server will, will stop receiving uh, new connections over HTTPS interface. You can also write something like system stop listen queries all and it will stop accepting all the queries and uh, after you do the after you did this query you cannot go and and just resume it but if you say stopped queries on https you can connect with uh, tcp and resume everything with a system start listen queries you can also do it on cluster and uh, it has a lot of options you can uh, stop listening for a particular interface including tcp uh, tcp with tls mysql compatibility postgres prometheus custom interfaces uh, replication protocol whatever but actually uh, one of the uh, the most uh, anticipated use cases is when you stop uh, queries but keep replication working and uh, just keep this uh, server to let other replicas replicate the data as a sort of a more graceful shutdown so maybe it will be nice for you, especially if you want to turn off uh, a replica and drain it to add another replica. Okay. If you are operating ClickHouse in a cluster, you definitely have ClickHouse Keeper. Because what else? Zookeeper. Zookeeper is no, <laughs> don't use the keeper. Always use ClickHouse Keeper. It's so much better. And what do we have for Keeper in the new 23.7 release? Now it is possible to store snapshots and logs on custom disks. You can use S3 for your snapshots and for your logs. It's only required to use local uh, storage for the latest log. But for previous logs, uh, they can go and be written to S3. And uh, it adds a lot of um, flexibility and removes a lot of complexity. Because when you install Keeper on a virtual machine, you have to decide how big should be the volume for keeper and it is unclear 
maybe you don't know in advance how big the tables will be, what the workload will be. But with this option, you can offload almost everything to external storage. And uh, the latest snapshot will be limited by size. Typically it is 50 megabytes. So maybe one gigabyte or even 100 megabytes will be enough for Keeper. And I'm afraid you will not find a way to create a volume such, such a small in AWS. But you can host multiple Keepers for different services on the same machine and it will work with a bounded size. And I like this feature a lot. Maybe you will also like it. Dynamic reconfiguration of Keeper. So if you configure multiple uh, nodes inside the Keeper cluster, sometimes you want to add new nodes, remove previous nodes, and it is already possible even in previous versions. Just edit the configuration file and it will work as expected. But since uh, Zookeeper version 3.5, there is a specific protocol command named reconfig. And if you enable this uh, reconfig command, it is just an, an option to enable it if needed. It will allow to dynamic reconfiguration without changing any configuration files, just by sending a request. And since version 23.7, you can do this in ClickHouse Keeper and it is 100% compatible with Zookeeper. The same protocol, uh, all the same clients and applications will work with ClickHouse Keeper if they use this reconfig command. Okay, what about importing and exporting data and data formats? What, what's new in ClickHouse 23.7? First is quite unusual and it needs to support all the cases of CSV. CSV is probably the most weird data format because nobody knows what is CSV. There is some specification. There is RFC, but parsing CSV is, mm, is undecidable problem. Maybe it is even, I would say, AI complete problem. And in ClickHouse, we support every case of CSV, but the number of cases increasing over time. So we have to support even weirder and weirder quirks. What about CSV with a variable number of columns? So imagine, uh, take a look at this CSV. It has one, two, three, four, five columns. And you have five values on the first record and something on the second record. It is also five values, uh, first, second, and three empty values. And this is normal. It works. It always worked. Even uh, in uh, one year ago, two years ago, but sometimes you can get this type of CSV and it has five values at the first record and only two values at uh, the second line. And it did not parse, but in the new ClickHouse version, just set this setting. 
input format CSV allow variable number of columns. And it will magically work. By the way, I invite you to take a look at every uh, every setting that we have for input format CSV. There is a lot of them. Maybe you will be surprised at what what kind of CSV data you can receive. And maybe in the next version, we will integrate a real uh, GAI into ClickHouse to parse CSV. A new format, a row binary with defaults. It is almost the same as row binary, but every value in this format is prefixed with a flag, one byte, equals to zero or one. And it allows to encode that the value is not present in the data. And the only purpose of this is to enable the calculation of default expressions. The table can have complex default expressions uh, using uh, other columns of the table. And with insert query, you can omit uh, particular columns. This is normal. But with this format, you can also omit uh, values of different columns in different records. So it was also uh, possible with a JSON format or protobuf, uh, many other formats like uh, Avro probably supported uh, this feature, but sometimes you want something easy and efficient. And row binary is exactly this type of format, easy and even trivial and efficient. What about performance? We have so many performance optimizations and even more in the new release. First is about parquet, parquet format. And uh, you could possibly ask me, but you already sp sped up parquet in the previous release and two releases ago. You are talking about optimizations for parquet for third time. But the reason is we did not stop optimizing. We always continue. And in this release, we optimize the writing, exporting data in parquet format. So let's take a look at this trivial query. Write uh, table hits into file hits.parquet. In version 22.6, it was 20, uh, 270 megabytes per second. And I expect you, you are thinking that it is fast because ClickHouse is fast and it was fast. Before the release 20, 3.7. Ah, sorry, why? Here is 22.7. I, I don't know. Read 23.7. Because we optimized it and now it is six times faster. Not megabytes per second, but gigabytes per second. Not thousand records per second, but million records per second. And actually, million and a half for a table with uh, 100 columns. And it is an achievement. And this, this will be difficult to explain. I will explain it like this. Sparse columns, multi-stage prepare, and we enabled it by default and we get over 10% improvement 
on average on clickbench i still don't believe this number because it is just a tremendous achievement and i run this benchmark uh, just today a few hours ago so if it is not a measurement error it is really a huge improvement should i explain what sparse columns are probably not because i explained it one year ago we introduced sparse columns in version 22 dot something like 22 dot one and after successful testing in over a year we are ready to enable it by default and now it is by default in version 23.7 let's switch to community projects and you might notice there are some interesting there is some interesting movement around so i will welcome our guest speaker we have two guest speakers uh, Oxton and Lorenzo to present CHDB. Are you ready? Thank you so much, Alexei. Well, I guess I'll kick it off first of all, first of all by saying thank you for having us as uh, Oxton start sharing the screen. So the, the point, I guess, of this uh, super quick uh, presentation is what if we could take our beloved click house everywhere? So we're already used, uh, you know, to everything uh, possible that we can do with uh, servers and clients. But uh, with CHDB, we try to open up the, the spectrum even more and just take ClickHouse everywhere. So I hand it off to Oxen, who's the author of uh, CHDB and the one that actually, you know, cracked uh, the, the beginning of this exciting adventure. And uh, he's going to tell us a little bit uh, what's CHDB. Okay, okay. Uh... Python. So first, I'm really for the the, the logo. I draw my draw it by 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 my hand. Yeah, and uh, so I will introduce my what is CHDB. So you can read from the name. It's based on ClickHouse, and uh, uh, I think uh, there's a CHDB saying like uh, a rocket engine on a bicycle. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, there's uh, so much feature about uh, CHDB. Uh, the first is the imprecise circle OLAP engine powered by ClickHouse proudly. Yeah. And uh, thirdly, no need to install or run ClickHouse server. And uh, support all ClickHouse function and uh, formats. And uh, we also support Python DB API too. And uh, of course, we support data, Pandas data frame. And uh, also, we just uh, developed the uh, stateful query session without uh, we, with uh, auto clean, and uh, we have tried our best to minimize the data copy from C plus plus to to the Python, and uh, also uh, our, our our contributors just contributed a lot of ban a lot of language bandings, including. Golang, Rust, Node.js, or also Bun. And uh, you can see a uh, architecture chart on the right side. And uh, it's quite simple. We just uh, redirect all the circle, circle to the uh, ClickHouse engine and uh, passing it by pure band 11 and, uh, and catch all the query results without uh, extra copy and uh, make it uh, Operatable in the Python side, and uh, if you are interested, uh, here's a story about uh, the CHDB, uh, the, the the birth of CHDB, and uh, in short, it's a uh, it's uh, just a uh, a story about uh, uh, cold winter. I have I have nothing to do. I started to yeah hack, and uh, so CHDB burned, and. Uh, and also, we just released on the Apache 2 uh, software license. And uh, if you are interested, you can just uh, use the 
this address is pointed pointed to the GitHub. And uh, so there's a lot of feature and use case about CGB. And, uh, and first, yeah, it's based on Clayhouse, so it's pure performance. Yeah, its performance is very good. And uh, all the all the all the things we do that uh, eliminate all the overhead communication between clients and the servers, accessing cloud data sites. And uh, we also have seamless integration. We we support all the ClickHouse OLAP and function, and uh, and uh, we we just need not to learn somewhere the query query circle or delicates. And uh, also we need to reduce the consumption. You can run ClickHouse uh, alongside uh, your code or uh, everywhere. Uh, just uh, you can write uh, in click in the notebook, uh, even uh, Lambda function. You do not need to maintain any costly backend server infrastructure. So if you don't query, it no, no, no will not cost uh, any way of money. So and uh, it's real time analytics. If you do real time analytics, CHDB will be a good tool, and. Uh, CDB can query the storage data, including S3 packet and uh, even uh, another ClickHouse service. And uh, the security is very good. So uh, you can run all the things you just uh, on your notebook and uh, or, or your private server. And uh, it's very easy to control the granular of data access and uh, implement the security measures. And uh, so you can use CHDB almost everywhere. So Renzo, it's your turn. Yeah, just, so yeah, basically just a you know a quick uh, recap because it's uh, you know it's a lot of uh, information here. So uh, you know for the, the the technicals here because we all uh, you know are super familiar. Uh, this is basically based uh, on uh, you know modified or uh, you know extended version of uh, ClickHouse local. Uh, so the the main uh, point of the development is all around Python because that's where you know uh, all of the, uh, the the action is when it comes to this stuff and that's the let's say mainline version that Oxen is maintaining. Uh, but in parallel, me and uh, a few more volunteers that will hope uh, you know others will join are uh, of course turning this into a more uh, generic binding. So. Uh, in a more experimental level, the goal is to have a uh, CHDB uh, as, uh, you know, a, a generic binding. We already have uh, rudimentals working bindings for uh, Node.js, for Golang, for Rust, uh, but, you know, they need love. So one of the points here is exactly to, uh, you know, find more hands uh, to, to come and stitch this together. Uh, but underlying is uh, still click out. So, uh, you know, you can expect the same features uh, right now. I think we're on 23.6. Uh, but you know it's uh, designed to keep up. So hopefully we're always going to be just uh, one version behind uh, the announcement and catch up by the next or something like that. Uh, but this is pretty much the, the structure. So the, the Python version mainline of development, libchdb, it's basically a, a, a subset or a parallel build uh, more generalized for other languages. And I think we have some demos now. Yeah, so, so you must want to see some demo. So I will show it, and uh, yeah, uh, we just uh, write some collab notebook. So it's quite easy to use. Uh, you just uh, need to install. Uh, no, the pandas prior is not very necessary if you don't want to uh, you if if you don't want to uh, pandas uh, pandas for my support. You can just uh, pip install CHDB, and uh, also. And you can query the data from S3 ATP or file and even another click house. Yeah, this is the, the demo. You can double get the, the data and uh, put it in the local and uh, you can use the use the, the URL as a as a table and uh, you can use the file as a table. You can also use S3 and you can run the query very easy and uh, just uh, run the query and uh, print. Uh, also, you can just uh, you can just uh, use the plot function and uh, 
if you use a data frame as a re result format, you can just plot and uh, so show some nice chart. Yeah. And also it's a uh, quite, quite interesting feature. You can just, uh, you can even query from the remote ClickHouse server. Yeah. We just query the play ClickHouse and uh, you can, you can try, you can get the, uh, uh, some trending reports uh, from GitHub and also you can just uh, chart very easy and uh, like this, yeah. And uh, also if you like, yeah, we, we just do a lot of data science work on the notebook so we can work with pandas. And uh, here's a show the pandas as uh, input. So we can just uh, show, create some pandas data and uh, select, select from here, from it, yeah. And uh, also that will also be a table and uh, you can use the table as a, as a input of, of another query. Okay. Uh, so recently we just uh, developed the session support. You can create a session and uh, you all the, all the queries here is the state will, will be maintained, yeah. You can create database, create table, create a view, insert, and uh, do the other stuff line by line, and uh, also query. You can query and the chart. Another yet is yeah. You if you if you want to keep your data, you can create a session with the name. We will not uh, automatically delete the data, and uh, if you you if you want to delete data, you can cause the clean up. And uh, after the, the the create function, yeah, you can see the the the, the structure of the directory, yeah. So so next is a quick demo. Here, yeah, let you Lorenzo introduce the demo. Will you? Oh, well, it's a super quick one, right? So since we have, uh, you know, CHDB is basically ClickHouse, uh, you know, at some point, uh, as, as shown, we can run it in, uh, you know, as part of a script, we can embed it in our code. But what if we wanted to pretend to be ClickHouse? And this is, uh, you know, a combo that, uh, you know, I'm passionate about. So you can take basically uh, ClickHouse Play and stitch it on top of uh, CHDB and have a fake ClickHouse that's actually not running anywhere. So this only executes when you click run. Uh, it spawns CHDB, it runs the query, and then it dies. So basically, this is like as close as you can get, in my opinion, to like having a free uh, ClickHouse instance that doesn't actually run anywhere, but it gives you all of the features. This is one is on uh, fly.io, so uh, we have a recipe on our repository, so anybody can you know just pick it up and run a copy. It's uh, basically totally free, and you can do your little ClickHouse data science and play like uh, mini Alexei, you know, replicate some of the demos. And as we displayed, CHDB can also connect to ClickHouse because it, it is ClickHouse. So you can actually attach to uh, ClickHouse Play. And I hope, you know, this is not going to generate uh, loads of extra bandwidth, but you can use it to query uh, the ClickHouse Play dataset remotely and, uh, you know, basically split the load. So you can have part of the storage somewhere, part of the query in the middle, and then uh, take the data in CHDB and do whatever you want locally. So it opens up like a third dimension. It's, uh, it's ClickHouse local on steroids. So also we have a lot of demos here. You can, you can just click and uh, check the demo. Also the, the, the demo, the Lambda function showed here is also open sourced. Uh, it's CHDB Lambda. You can try to deploy it yourself, yeah. And uh, also let me introduce the project roadmap. Uh, so we just uh, finished the rebase to the ClickHouse 23.6 and it's uh, released on the uh, 0 0.11 yeah. And uh, we just uh, uh, and we also introduced the stable section session in the in the 0 0.11.4, yeah. But it's uh, really beta. We, we, uh, we, we need more, more guys to help our test, yeah. We, we just, uh, yeah, fill our uh, goal. We just uh, make it uh, runnable on the ARM64 Linux, yeah. 
and uh, we 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 will do the Python UDF support, and uh, which is very important for the data science job. And uh, we will continue to do the performance improvement for Panda data frame. Yeah, it's also in, very important for the data science. And also we will do the shared library maintenance and improve binding from for Go, Golang, Rust, and Node.js. Also the successful session support for that. And uh, we can do some selective build to, to minimize the size, yeah. So if you have any idea, so please tell us. You can submit a feature request or submit a PR. We will, it will be very welcome. So, so it's Lorenzo, yeah. Oh yeah, well, uh, if you're like me, uh, that's exactly what I did a few months ago. I saw this going on and I jumped in. Uh, if you want to do the same, come and help us make this thing uh, more amazing. So there's a few ways that you can do so. Of course, uh, you can jump on our Discord uh, where you know you can talk to us directly and we can discuss the craziest ideas that you can have. Uh, you can give us a star, of course, and share the project. If uh, you're a contributor and you want to hack, jump in uh that space of course for those that already know click as well this is click out so all of that knowledge directly applies here in terms of uh you know uh making it better and uh, keeping it as fast uh, as it should be uh but also if you're not into click house and you're into uh you know go ras no js and one we need help with the bindings so you know right now they're pretty rudimental uh we gotta make them elegant we gotta make them do what people actually expect uh, we need to implement uh, you know this session uh, support and so on so you know if, if you want to get dirty jump in and then of course if you're not a developer you can still help uh, making uh, use cases for it trying it out writing a blog post uh, testing it and uh, whatever else and uh, if you have pockets you can join our open collective we're trying to you know raise a little bit of funds to uh to have a few guys work on this full time and go even faster right now of course we're in a community mode so we're doing our best but we would like for this to be something that people can rely on not just uh, like an experiment that comes and goes and maybe one day become part of clickhouse itself okay <clears throat> thanks lorenzo uh i like chdb because it is uh, a way uh, how to make clickhouse smaller but we should also try to make ClickHouse bigger and maybe it should be our focus instead. So the next uh, interesting community project is named Big House, if I'm not mistaken. mistaken. And I like this name. So Dan, please tell me what it is. Hi, yeah. So I'm Dan. Uh, I've been playing around with a project called Big House. And what Big House is, is effectively an alternative runtime model for ClickHouse that targets the BigQuery and Snowflake use case. So hence the somewhat clever name. Um, and it's mainly for either heavy batch workloads or imbalanced write and read workloads where writing only needs a small amount of resources, but reading might require significantly larger resources, you know, hundreds or thousands of cores. Um, and the way we do this is very similar to the Big House model or the Snowflake model. Um, where when a query comes in, we actually dynamically provision a ClickHouse cluster um, using a provider like Fly.io, where you only pay for compute time during query execution. Uh, we can really quickly assemble thousands of cores in like four to eight seconds, and there's plenty of opportunity for optimization there, um, and pull already in experiments billions of rows per second out of data stored in S3. And uh, I have a little flow chart here. This is just the readme of the GitHub, but you know you can see we invoke the query. A coordinator spins up a bunch of ClickHouse nodes. They join an existing Zookeeper or Keeper, uh, ClickHouse Keeper. Um, then we execute the distributed query, and then in parallel we destroy the nodes in the background while also returning the results of the client. Um, and the goal is really to decouple the resources needed between write and read as well as provide those queries with fully dedicated resources. So instead of you know, multiple queries sh sharing the same resources within a ClickHouse cluster, I know that my query is gonna get the full you know, 300 cores, two terabytes of RAM, or however much you provision for it. Um, it's effectively the original AWS Lambda model, but for OLAP 
Um, but it also improves the multi-tenant experience in ClickHouse a little bit because you know you get those dedicated resources for your query. Um, this is still, a, has a really long way to go. This is very experimental. I've been tooling around with all sorts of optimizations, thanks to both Lorenzo and Alexei for answering a million of my questions about ClickHouse as I learned to explore it. Um, but some of the optimizations that I can already see are deeper integrations with external data management systems like ICB, which is another project of mine that's effectively a Parquet ingest and merge engine. Um, to really optimize the performance of starting a query quickly, um, speeding up view creation for URL and S3 cluster table functions. And what I'm most excited about is building a custom compute scheduler on top of pre-provisioned uh, servers like EC2 to build a system similar to fly.io, but purely optimized for big house um, and get that dynamic cluster provisioning ready in well under a second, since we can store the image locally on the nodes and just turn on instances. Um, or an alternative is to run uh, or to have the data closer to the compute in fly.io by creating a you know, S3 cluster with something like Minio. Um, ultimately, we wanna try to reach hundreds of billions of rows per second, if not cracking a trillion. I don't know, we'll see. We can summon like 8,000 cores for a query. So, um, you know, it'll be exciting to see how much we can scale horizontally um, and, and doing so on actual useful queries of real data sets. Um, in terms of end to end performance uh, limitations really right now are network card bandwidth, cluster bootstrap speed and metadata loading times. Um, I really hope I can work with a lot of the teams around ClickHouse and projects like CHDB to expand the performance and capabilities of Big House, uh, you know, deeper integration with those external data management systems, um, and really achieve that arbitrary read throughput that I'm going after with the dynamic provisioning model for data sets stored in remote storage like S3. Sounds nice. And I like the name. Big House sounds better than, say, Fluffy DB or whatever. How, how <laughs> people typically name the, their databases today? Yes, yeah, my question is usually does it work at all? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. I didn't want to attempt the gods of doing a live demo, um, but I could share my screen again and show you some of the, uh, performance tests uh, in the readme. Please don't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think everyone should try, uh, this, uh, this project. By the way, if you want to participate in the next release webinar, uh, to, uh, to present your integration, uh, Welcome, uh, send an email uh, or connect with me uh, on Slack. Okay, what about something special, something unusual in the new release? So there is a feature to represent a file system as a database, as a database with tables. And this database is automatically attached and available by default in ClickHouse Local. So let's take a look at the evolution. Uh, what you have, have to do to just read a CSV file. Six years ago in uh, ClickHouse version 1.1, in 2017, you had to write this query. Select star from file. File is a table function with a file name, format uh, name, and the structure. In ClickHouse version 22.1, we have added type inference uh, for data formats. And you can omit the structure and write it simpler. In ClickHouse 23.1, we have implemented automatic detection, disambiguation between CSV and CSV with names. 
So the header is automatically detected. And you can write it like this. Select from function file and the file name. What can possibly be even simpler? If you just write the file name as a table name like this, select from test.csv and that's it. And now it works in version 23.7. But how it is actually implemented? So we have a new database engine file system. And yes, you can create this database even on the server. You can create it without parameters or with a subdirectory with a path. And it will point to the user files directory where you can read and write arbitrary files. And you can query it like this uh, database name. And the, this is just a table name. It can be in any supported format like Avro. Okay, you have Avro uh, compressed. No problem, we will read compressed files on the fly. And even more, it is not only for local file systems. You can also create S3 and HDFS database engines. So why don't create database with engine S3? You can create it without parameters or uh, specify a URL as a prefix. And you can query it like this, database name dot table name as this URL. Or if you specify the prefix, it can be simpler like this. Looks pretty nice. Ah, by the way, let me ask. Tyler, we have an overtime of uh, about 10 minutes. Do you mind about this overtime? No, not at all. It's only 10 minutes and this is great content. Perfect. So what is weirder than this file system databases? It's a new query language named PRQL. So there is a structured query language, SQL, and there is PR query language. What is PR? Promotion, pull request. Actually, it is pipeline relational query language, and I should say prequel. So not SQL, but prequel. It's even cooler than SQL, than your daddy's SQL, OG query language, but PRQL is something new. Take a look at this query. Uh, Actually, it is strange. It contains so much syntax, curly braces, round braces, uh, date literals with this strange character. No. Something strange. Let's take a look how to use it. And we provide just an experimental support, just an option to use it in ClickHouse. Run the following query, set dialect equals to PRQL, and you no longer will be able to run SQL queries, only prequel queries. And prequel queries look as follows. Hmm. I don't know what, what to say. This looks like an array, but it is not an array. It is just a list uh, of identifiers. And I can sort by negative unit price and possibly by negative name. And it looks strange, but what do the authors say about this language? And they say it is written in Rust. And it should explain everything. So try it. And maybe it will work if you, you are really lucky. 
just uh, have fun. Uh, try it as an experiment. Okay, now what about integrations? Integrations in ClickHouse Cloud. The biggest release is named ClickPipes. What a wonderful name. And what it does, it allows you to subscribe to Kafka either in uh, uh, Kafka uh, Confluent Cloud or to your own uh, self-hosted Kafka. And it allows you to specify everything interactively as a wizard. It will allow you to, to specify the table structure for you. It will show you the progress, uh, the progress of consumption. It will allow you using uh, schema registry from Conf uh, Confluent Cloud. So you might wonder, how is it better than the Kafka engine inside ClickHouse? And I would say it is not just better. It is like uh, Kafka engine, but for, for uh, real people, for users who want it to work reliably and uh, who want to not worry about distributed system who wants to just set up and let it do all the job. Okay, what about uh, client drivers? In the JavaScript client, there is one nice addition. It is available for browsers and for similar environments like Cloudflare workers. And when I think about JavaScript, I'm always trying to do it as less, uh, to touch, touch JavaScript as rarely as possible and get away of, uh, get away of it somehow. And I know that I can connect to ClickHouse without any libraries, I can just, use a fetch API or even XML HTTP request if I am old fashioned. But if you import a real library, ClickHouse.js, you can get streaming consumption of results. You can write in TypeScript and get the advantage of types. For example, or uh, all ClickHouse settings will be typed. It uh, contains examples. You can just copy paste these examples and uh, everything will work. If you like JavaScript or TypeScript, you will definitely prefer using ClickHouse JS. Okay, and what about uh, our blog? So uh, there are quite a few of new content. For example, have you ever wondered how to convince your friends to migrate from Redshift to ClickHouse? You probably don't have to convince uh, them to migrate from Postgres to ClickHouse, but from Redshift or from BigQuery or from Snowflake, just point to our blog. If you have ever used AWS, you definitely know about this uh, service, Vantage.sh. And they, use, they are using ClickHouse. Uh, another interesting article is how to build business analytics on top of internal data warehouse using ClickHouse and all the fluff like DB. T airflow uh, five trend and all this, uh, you know, that technologies and how to use the magnificent click house for actual job. Read this article. 
And if you want to start using click pipes, we also have a content for you. Okay, now we probably have five minutes, just five minutes for your questions. Amazing, thank you, Alexei. That was an immense amount to cover. And of course, Lorenzo, Oxton, Dan, thank you. We have a couple of questions that have come in. And for those that were, were unable to answer live on the call, uh, I will follow up in, in Slack or in email or in YouTube chat, depending on, on where it came in. Uh, Arnaud asks, are we working on better and I'll, I'll say more parquet support, for example, uh, pushdown support? Uh, I would say we are keeping it in mind and we are about to start working on this nice optimization. The lack of this optimization constantly bothers us. So it will be not a long time uh, to get this implemented. Gotcha, thank you. And the question came in um, and you touched on it a little bit at the beginning in the first question, but I, I think it's worth surfacing again, uh, whether there's any status updates on, on the JSON type, but it was supplemented with the statement is, is there any progress on, on moving it to fully supported? And I think as, as you might've mentioned, what, what can the community do to support that? So the current status uh, after this feature was successfully implemented for 99.9%. Uh, the main engineer behind this feature suddenly lost the interest of implementing it. <laughs> and now uh, the rest of the team and uh, the rest of the company trying to convince him. We can get this uh, just a little of remaining stuff, get it done in uh, one way or another way. And uh, recently we agreed on how it can be finished. So uh, actually there is not just 0.1%, uh, there is about a half to still, still have to do implemented. So we will take this half, <laughs> the remaining half, and uh, again, uh, implement it uh, up to 99 at 9%. And after this, we will update you on the schedule. Awesome, makes sense. The next question is, uh, do async inserts support deduplication? The documentation says asynchronous inserts don't support this built-in automatic deduplication. But um, Avinash has seen some videos from, from ClickHouse that, that talk about async inserts doing deduplication. Yeah, and most likely it was me on this uh, strange videos explaining that uh, currently we have support for deduplication. The documentation can be slightly behind the latest version of ClickHouse. So currently you can enable deduplication for asynchronous inserts and even more. Since version 23.7, you can also use deduplication token, user provided token for deduplication if you want. Understood, excellent. Well, maybe one more then, Alexei. The question is, why does the S3 remote tables only support prefix and some wildcard permutations for object filtering instead of also using range-based iterators? Uh, Alejandro goes on to say that would allow for using the object path schema to be used as the index into the data. Mm -hmm. So the case when you have a bunch of files and uh, these files follow some pattern with uh, numeric ranges and you want to select by these uh, ranges. Uh, there are similar feature requests. One of them uh, from Dan, uh, Dan Goodman, about supporting uh, Hive partitioning schema for external files. And I think this is something that we will implement the first. 
So it should be represented like a partition of table, uh, understanding uh, some uh, patterns as uh, indexes of, to select subset of files. So I expect we will start with that. Amazing. Uh, I think we're at time. I just want to wrap up by saying a couple of things real quick. First of all, uh, again, Dan, Lorenzo, Oxen, thank you. Um, the power of a database is the data that is in it and the things that people build around it. Thank you for giving your time, um, for some of you very late in the evening, to join us and talk about what you are building. If you've watched this call or if you're watching the recording of it and you were interested in sharing what you're building, uh, please reach out to me, Tyler at ClickHouse, or find me on the social medias, uh, even when they change their name, or Alexei or myself on Slack. And as you have more questions, ask us. Ask us on Slack, clickhouse.com slash Slack is the invite link, uh, or ask us in GitHub, or ask us on LinkedIn, or ask us on whatever Twitter has decided to rename itself to today. Uh, we delight in having the interaction and in learning about what you build. Thank you all so very much for joining us on the live ClickHouse monthly call. We look forward to the next one coming up soon. Have a good night.